Express ubawo u Oliver Tambo namhlanje sikholo kanye londo ukuze sibe nakho ukufundisana ngolo hlobo njengoba nijongile apha ngaphambili njabona ubhale Eh, apa ngapambili eh, sino munga meli ngu nungu kwa ke eh, kukele elikiza eh, le officials the African National Congress eh, not only the officials eh, ENWC ikona ilapa njongobe sicho eh, beze kweli pulo lukubasibe na kukusondilana eh, ne Nelson Mandela inku kili eh, zalapa paya pansi Chunguba sibona apa kule royo kal, eh, sino FT klasa ilungu le NWC na angwa chilipa pansi ekamgo tata uchef ukadebe enye ingu kili eh, epuma apa kwe NWC ANC ibe ngu kumbri tumtualeji eh, na angia na ye eh, kukunga tuandisi amba kwenye apa kwa kukumbri titi eh, Viva kulendonga biko kwe adverts. Na e, mwanga la sisi pinas adverts kutuwa vivo bambazi nga biko. Padu kumbrete umutualeti ukona e, ulapa. Ibe kumbrete usisnumfula. E, Umkwanyana na ye ukona e, ulapa. E, Njenga nga lenye ye mkukili zitu. Ezu koyo e, apa kulendibano ya na mtanje. E, nga lenye ye NWC e, leadership. Apa pezulu. E, paya ekukalini sino president. Eh, omele uma omama eh, umama ujamini umama tabile jamini ya yeah. yes eh, tamu kwa ke sinomea wenu ke eh, enimazi yono wanke kuba kuba nika mala ke eh, tamu kwa ke sino TG eh, utresola general we African National Congress Eh, uba umkeze <laughs> eh, apa italeni eh, kukole ngumbane ilapo kukala nga neno kwa amu eh, apa italeni kukumonga mili ngumbane lena useke la eh, no pala chikelele umaka ngamji kakele umaka <laughs> 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 ngamji kakele Eh, we uyelo, eh, ndo mbezi skukuku. Ya, yeah, utela hape mepa ya. Eh, uyegelo, useke la eh, no paala. Eh, chikelele, witu ngokuwa la hapa. Oh, ok, sorry. Oh, ok. Kose kwa kuru. Very sorry. And the ball in the light, uh, you know, Ukala pa umama u una lady pando na ungia ya na ungia no mama u tina jumat na ungia eh bengu si si. Uktabashe paya. Okay. Bengu mamunazo. Susnozo, ne? Snazo. Ubi. Snazo. Oh. Of. We know political level veterans league. We are we are going to. Eh, now I'm going to come ready. Come ready. Come ready. Oh, okay, Kaba. Now I'm here, Pa. Come ready, Malus. Ah, I'm going to pack my bag. Ah, 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 ah. Ah, eh, 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 Malus. Eh, Malus. So many people go to TV. Eh, upa kama sumjua TV kwa kutu umalus. Eh, mara, ya, kumeduki kabaloa upaya. Apa pezulu, 
apa pesulu senokata, ukata, we we youth league, u mengambili, papa dua baca, iya lo, oke, ukata, 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 muncha, apa nak umur dua puluh gile, waktu dua puluh asas seteli song ke, song ke seteli, waktu dua puluh asas seteli song ke. O secretário general, o Mr. Guedes Mantes. Mr. Guedes Mantes, secretário general, o que é que ele ouve na eu? O que é apa? Se correr na compra, se encontrar ele zel pondo, se correr apa lendau, se correr na encontrar ele zel rit, na zo, se correr lendau, o baga logo. Apa aku kau kele RTT? Apa Nelson Mandela be? Baku na bonge balapa abu bandu kau kelua ukombe itu u Charles u Charles nak gula kunye na abu baku na balap. Zikau na kesun kau keli zilapa unop bala umah buaya ni kau kele amalungu PEC ukau na ulapa pakat itu itu naya kanan jalo. Kombe itu. Comrades, unopala, ukomrejo, ukwete mandash, ufikenye kwa sile righti ga, ungasona unopala. Unopala, unopala uzausa zise la chete se tu, sembeko. Ukukubwa namtange kasi petelo mkuimbi kwa watambo sisi zawe si niku angubani nti atika milai na pana chiga na Amanda au tu Mata Aruna Pambili ngomunga mili Pambili Pambili ngote kupzuma Pambili Comrades, peace again, Zimbabwe. God bless. Since we get late, my story is said. God bless again, Zimbabwe. Go to Amandi. Mandazi se umunga melu ANC. I don't know. No buka no oyemba ANC. Onga mazi. Umunga melu ANC. O comrade Jacob Kelikegi samshanga nyelo zuma. President NC, ubage uza muni history yake. I will be turned into a keynote speaker because kwa yana the history yake is a lecture. A core structure sombu tu angazanga serve kuso. Nakuba ngumu kondo we siswe. Nakuba itri junior movement is actu. Nakuba i communist party. Nancy, you need to record and come on. Come on, Nancy. We tell me it's been some kete pulu kwa na some pin de manga um. Come on, come on. Come on, tell me na ban basi bye. Go on, go on. Come on, come on. Happy na na ba fa fe. Na na ba fa le le ba te le. Oh, 
Sangue Nagan de Pinde, the Fumana, Eoninku Lugan, who sent Tibena Befundis. Ewe, Emba women, a bandish my zanga. Jangova says La Pagango, which is all clearly mean. In Tlegeland, was Salis Salis Tiba. See two teta teta. That Nangem Bella P. Bas Bella Pina. Nanko Kale Zet. Sing a libat. Sifund and end of Piacuzo. Nam Sanje, the Eclashas Tibene. Nabefundis si teteng in two pego, a pegan and umtom yam, and go a fungus diban, who was a seal when I was a susel and to go in zim. Tom yama, who sends me. Sinzinina, 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 so no se tu, so no se tu, ubunyama. So no se tu, oh ubunyama. So no se tu, so no se tu, ubunyama. So no se tu. So no se tu, so no se tu, oh buña. So no se tu, so no se tu, oh buña. So no se tu, so no se tu, oh buña. So no 
NC Provincial Deputy Chairperson, who is the director of this program, members of the National Executive Committee of the ANC, provincial leadership of the ANC, the leadership of the Alliance, partners, and leaders of Sanko, religious leaders who are with us, and traditional leaders, veterans of our organization, comrades, and friends, we greet you all. Molweni, good evening. Khuyanak. Dumela. Abshed. Nimasharoni. <laughs> A few days after the Sharpeville massacre in 1960, the ANC dispatched its deputy president, Comrade Oliver Regional Tambo, to go and galvanize international support for the anti-apartheid struggle. He was set, he was to set foot on the land of his birth again, only three decades later. This decision followed a statement that was made by General President Albert Rutuli in 1959 when a decision was taken to isolate South Africa. When he made a public statement calling the boycott of South Africa by the big countries of the world where he said, if you trade and have economic relations with South Africa, you are in fact empowering South Africa to further oppress brutally the oppressed people in this country. So I thought he had been given already in 1959 that the time had come for us to talk to the world to isolate South Africa. And when this decision therefore was taken was partly an implementation of that decision that was taken by the National Executive Committee. You will realize that it was a very serious decision. The ANC did not say any of the National Executive Committee members should go abroad. It went to its deputy to show that they have taken the issue of the international mobilization of our support very seriously. It's important to have that background. During October each year, the ANC celebrates the life of this outstanding South African and selfless fighter for justice, freedom, human rights, and equality 
who sacrificed so much for his country. Oliva Regional Kaizan Tambo was still is and will always be the pride of the African Nation Congress. One of the outstanding leaders of this organization. As we all know, he was born on the 27th October 1917 in Bizan. He was among the founding members of the ANC Youth League in 1944 and became its first national secretary. Together with comrades Walter Sisulu, Nelson Mandela, Ashbim Da, Anton Lembede, Dr. William Komo, Dr. C. M. Machombozi, and others. They were instrumental in the transformation of the African National Congress. They infused the organization with the new ideas and changed it to become a progressive and potent tool in the hands of our people in the struggle for liberation. President Tambo bears the distinction of having been the longest serving president of the ANC. When Chief Lutuli died, he became acting president for a long period of time until he was formally elected to the position by the NEC at the time. <clears throat> the NEC took this decision because it was not in keeping with uh, <clears throat> a situation where you have an acting president forever. So the NEC decided, as you know, the NEC between conferences is the one that takes the final decisions, that he should be <clears throat> made the president, not acting. <clears throat> that meeting that took that decision was held in Angola. Much as many of the members of the National Executive Committee thought it was an easy matter, because there was no other person to take that position. He had performed so well. He had been, in the last conference of the ANC, been seen as, uh, if, we, if we use the today's language, number two. And he had been ably be in a position to lead the ANC. He had mobilized the world against apartheid, built MK from the beginning, and indeed articulated our positions. So many thought it was an easy matter. And the matter was tabled. And as the NEC thought it was concluding the matter, he raised his hand. And he said he disagrees with the decision to become the president. He believes he should continue acting, which surprised the National Executive Committee. 
when he was told, uh, Comrade uh, President, we are really out of order. We are taking a decision here. We take the decision about you. We are deploying you. He said, no, I'm not going to take it. I must be given a chance to speak. The debate took hours. <clears throat> and the debate get, got more tense here as we debated. He asked a question, why have I been acting for so long? What has gone wrong? Am I, have I acted wrongly? No, but we're acting because <clears throat> President Tuli was there. He's no longer there. He says, yes, he was a president. I am a deputy, I'm not a president. We thought that the argument was going to be very light. It went on and on, and he was putting his foot down. No. It's fine, I'm acting. No, uh, there's no one who did not speak in the NEC trying to persuade President Tambo to accept the decision of the NEC. He was saying, no, I'm not accepting it. One of the speakers was very close to him, who also took the floor very passionately was Comrade Moses Mapida. And OR said, no, I'm not. And when you listened to him, it was very difficult to argue with OR. We began to say what was going on in OR's head, really. We were saying, you know, you can't be like, you know, you visit heads of state, I can't be saying acting. Acting for who? <clears throat> so he said, I've been acting for who all the time? He asked us. <clears throat> uh, and everybody got now very serious. He realized we are all serious now. What is the president doing? He was a very complex man. He would think things that we're not thinking. <clears throat> Comrade Moses Mapede was the general secretary of the party, describing OR when we're sitting, just sitting, talking about the struggle. He says, OR, <clears throat> he's so gifted in thinking. He can see things three years before we all see them. One of, one, of, one of the ideas in his head, fact that the ANC had not taken a decision immediately after <clears throat> the death of President Lutuli, No one could explain why we did not take the decision immediately, or the NEC itself. So OR believed that maybe, maybe the ANC had something in his head about this position. And we said, but tell us, who, can, who else can be? He says, but they are, they are leaders, senior leaders on Robben Island. What is your problem? They are senior leaders of the ANC on Robben Island. They are not dead. Why can't we have a president from there? Why can't we elect a president here who is on Robben Island? Another angle of the debate. He said, but, but who? Why? They are in the Robben Island. They can't conduct a struggle. You are conducting the struggle here. 
We said I've been conducting it, acting. I will continue conducting it, acting. Tough. And he said, well, there is Mandela, there is Susulu, there is Mbegi, <clears throat> these senior comrades. Why not one of them, the president? The name that is really out there, recognized by the world, for an example, is Mandela. We can do more about that if, for an example, it becomes the president, it could even add value in our fight for their release, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> no, we argued. Argued back. And finally, <clears throat> he was compelled to accept <clears throat> to become the president. I am telling this normally Things that are discussed in the NEC are not public things. We are not allowed to say anything. If anyone of the NEC says things to you guys, you must know it's wrong. We shall not public, publicized by the ANC. We are not allowed. I'm saying this because it's an old meeting of the ANC. But also, <laughs> also, to explain the type of comrade leader, Oliver Tam. Position was not the first thing that he needed. His belief was that it was work that counted, not the position. That's the point I'm tracing. For him, he should, I'm sure many would have said, I've been waiting for this inside. I'm sure. Not OR. He argued in the most serious manner. I remember <clears throat> after the meeting when we finally agreed we were having a, a, <clears throat> a break and I wanted to say this to him. I said, Comrade President, today you used your English because he knew English very well. You used your mathematics to argue your case. I've never seen such an argument. It was difficult to argue against him. But of course, because this was a big <clears throat> collective voice and we, had, we were determined to make him the president. He finally got convinced. But having done it, you know, the, thing, the third thing I said he was using, English, mathematics, and law. I said, told him that you combined these things in the argument. Because he argued very seriously. He started as if it was just one small thing. At one point, it was clear he does not want. But finally, we prevailed. I just thought you should understand who was OR. Deep thinker will say things that you would not expect. He led the organization during one of the most difficult and trying moments of the liberation struggle. When the ANC had to be reduced into a very minimal presence in the country, and it had to emerge outside as the headquarters and deal with the first task of mobilizing the world, but also of building the People's Army of Kondo Sisu and plan how MK must get into the country and fight. The ANC had been banned and had gone underground. He was given the task of establishing the external mission of the ANC, which had declared an armed struggle in 1961. 
the enemy dealt a heavily, heavy blow to our movement in 1963. Its core leadership or leaders were arrested and later sentenced to life imprisonment, among them the Rivonia Trialists. The then President General Chief Albert Lutuli was confined to Groudville in KZN under terrible restrictions and burning orders. Provincial leadership as well as regional and small units of MK and underground structures were also dealt a heavy blow through detentions. Things had to change. The external mission had to become the main center of the movement. And indeed, that happened. President Tambo became the glue that held the many facets of the ANC together during the difficult period. He became a capable pastor to all the strands of ANC Broad Church. He was able to do this because of his character. He was disciplined and highly principled. He was a humble servant of the people, an empowering leader and democrat. He was a man of integrity, a persuader, and a skilled diplomat. He had the ability to give and also take advice and draw strength from others. President Tambo was very mindful of the rights of women. He commissioned a code of conduct to ensure that women's rights were respected and upheld by all in the organization. These qualities were demonstrated in various ways as he built the movement and its cadres, thus contributing to some of his tried and tested traditions and character. It is more from him that we learned to operate as a collective. The discipline of the collective remains a fundamental trait of disciplined cadres of the ANC. It was also under his leadership that the ANC de developed a culture of taking its decisions through consensus. He was also an exemplary good listener. Many of those who worked with him in exile can attest to this notion that OR had a capacity to listen to all points of views before he could take any critical decision. Hence, the meetings of the National Executive Committee 
ran for a week. He also believed passionately in building leadership and capacity within the ANC. <clears throat> it's important just to clarify this point even more. The collective leadership, the listening skills, the learning part of President Oliver Tambo. Because I believe we celebrate Tambo during this month because we want to learn from this extraordinary leader. We are not just doing it for the sake of it. We want to learn. He was not an individualist. He inculcated a culture of collective leadership. No leader under him at the leadership level felt was less important than others. He made all of us feel important. He valued our views, even if we are not saying anything important, or are we take something out of what you say. And he wanted to make sure that everybody agreed, everybody was clear, and thus the discussion on the issues was very thorough. By the time you finish a point, even if you came with a contrary view, by the time we finished, you will be as satisfied as anything that, yes, at the beginning, I was wrong. Now, the NEC is right. That empowered the National Executive Committee because it meant that we learned in the debate. We understood with policy even better after a debate. In fact, kind as he was, almost not a single one of his collective, the NEC, never met or are to address and deal with you, even those who thought they were clever. <clears throat> there was a comrade who was very <clears throat> talkative, an old comrade, I won't mention his name, <clears throat> who used to say, I was progressive before President Tambo was progressive. They were all growing together. One time, <clears throat> he made a mistake. He thought something that had happened to him was done either by Comrade Tabumbeki or OR. He came angry in the NEC. And he, he talked for the first time, he cried. And he said, we are taking my political grave this National Executive Committee is digging my, my political grave. You were all sympathizing with this comrade. <laughs> because a report, a sensitive report, had come into the country and somebody who was problematic in the country then was sort of dangling it. And nobody knew how it got there. And we were all quiet, <laughs> sympathizing with this comrade. When O.R. started talking, we were shocked. He said, come, why are you crying? Eh? Why are you crying? You can't cry here. This is a revolution. If you die, die. What's wrong with you? <laughs> we're all shocked. <laughs> we're all shocked. This man who used to say I was progressive first, I don't fear O.R., that time he became small. I said, next, next, next item. For no time to play here, this is a revolution. Who oh, cry here in front of these young people? What's wrong with you? <laughs> I said, hey, you can't confirm OR. Can't confirm him. <clears throat> this was one comrade. Let me mention his name because he was a very famous comrade. 
Nsabi. <laughs> it's important to talk about him because he was very problematic, but very good comrade. <laughs> when he died, O'Ari had to speak in his funeral. When the coffin was being lowered, <clears throat> he shot his arm out of the coffin. Yeah, I'm sad. <laughs> Somehow the coffin must have been mishandled. And, and the lid got up and the hand got boom. <laughs> oh, I had to say as you were speaking, that is Comrade Msad. Even in his grave, he's showing the hand. <laughs> But I'm, 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 I'm trying to say, O.R. was a special leader. And I want to say, I haven't met a leader like O.R. They have different qualities. He was a special, special president who made everybody feel at home. He listened to every person. And you think he does not know you, and he will surprise you. Even if a comrade came to complain about the fact that one of his shoelaces got lost and his shoes is wobbly, he needs a shoelace. Oh, I will listen attentively, and he will make sure that the shoelace is found. That's how meticulous he was. If you went to report to him on any operation, you have to prepare extra. Because he's going to ask you the questions you will have difficulties to answer. Even if you were saying, I handed over the message in a box of matches over the fence, he's going to question you at what part of the fence. So you, you couldn't confirm him, what, confirm him what question he would ask. Very detailed, just excellent, excellent. You know, I always say one day there was a delegation from whom one Mbongi from Mampondweni was praising him. And this Mbongi said, Lento ena matapaza ekolite engondwe. And I thought he summarized him. Many of those who became leaders of the ANC in the post-liberation period were, in the main, personally groomed and developed by OR. He taught you how to master <coughs> the fear of answering questions in a news kind of thing. And he will tell you, don't look at people who are here. Just think we are on your own. You are faced with a problem that you must explain the ANC. Don't think about other things. Just say what you know, because you know it. The fear must not be there. We nicknamed him. We're not calling him, <coughs> we particularly with the Comrade Tab because we were very close with Comrade Tabo and he loved sending us around. We called him Bones, so that when he's near, he not hear that we are talking about him. See, two Bones, you know. Hey, we have food, two Bones, I'm <laughs> We have food. <clears throat> One time he asked me to go and fetch Tabo, he wanted to fight with Tabo. I, I, I wondered why I was in that meeting, by, by sheer accident, by just fetching Tabo. And when he came out, he said, Tabo said, hey, Bones wanting to eat me alive today. <laughs> <clears throat> it was his leadership style as well that made a success of the Consultative Morocoro Conference of 1969, which symbolized the ANC's ability to transcend divisive tendencies. Conference also symbolized the triumph of non-racialism as the key principle of the organization and the alliance. It was also President Tambo's force 
of example which calmed tempers in the camps when disputes about basic necessities, discontent with some leaders and ill-advised eagerness to go back home to South Africa to fight surfaced. Comrades stayed a long time outside and they wanted to come back and at times they would really cause problems. Why are we here? We need to go home and fight. And there were conditions that had to be taken into account. The leadership that he <coughs> provided to Umkonto Wesizwe as commander-in-chief of the People's Army was inspiring to many young freedom fighters. In early 1967, when the Revolutionary Council decided on the first military campaign to South Africa, the Wanki campaign, Oliver Tambo accompanied the fighters right down to the Zambian bank of the Zambezi River, accompanied by Comrade Thomas Ngobe, who was our Treasurer General then. This gesture demonstrated support and more profoundly that he was one of them. At every stage of our movement, his hand could be detected. Throughout all the critical decades, from the 60s, 70s, 80s, to our return home in 1990, President Tambo worked tirelessly in the pursuit of our freedom. On the 8th of January, 1985, he delivered his most dramatic speech calling on people to make the country ungovernable and apathetic unworkable, following the July 1985 state of emergency. When the time came to engage the enemy, in President Tambo, we were fortunate to have a leader who was able to chart the way forward towards a negotiated settlement. At that time, many were still finding it difficult to accept that there would be no dramatic seizure of power. He understood at the time that the apartheid regime was irreversibly cornered by the forces of liberation led by the ANC. He sent comrades Tabombegi and I to initiate a dialogue with the <clears throat> oppressors and led the ANC capably in key processes that led South Africa to negotiations and the transition to freedom. Comrades, another key inheritance from President Tambo to the South African national, to the, Af to the South African nation, was his internationalism, which enabled us to sharpen the international pillar of our struggle. The international campaign to release President Mandela and the other political prisoners, the campaign for sanctions against apartheid South Africa, and the creation of an understanding of South Africa under apartheid were all skillfully executed under his leadership. His skillful, his skillful diplomatic skills also led to the recognition of the ANC 
by the Organization for African Unity and the United Nations. The declaration of apartheid as a crime against humanity was due to his tireless leadership of the international pillar of our struggle. Assisted by African governments, President Tambo established ANC missions in Egypt, Ghana, Morocco, and in London. From these small beginnings, under his stewardship, the ANC acquired missions in a total of 27 countries by 1990. Through President O.R., the anti-apartheid movement also flourished and became one of the greatest multi-class, multi-regional, international solidarity movements ever seen in the history. We cultivated relations with many countries in the socialist bloc the Nordic bloc and the non-aligned movement who became our strong partners in the struggle against apartheid colonialism. Today, South Africa is a new nation founded on the fundamental principles of human dignity, democracy, and equal rights for all. As we celebrate his life, we know that President Tambo would not be satisfied merely with us having achieved freedom and democracy. Indeed, we have been working hard to destroy the legacy of apartheid in the past 21 years. At the political level, we have succeeded to create a society premised on the principles outlined in the Freedom Charter. We have a government based on the will of the people, elected every five years through a national democratic elections. The country's constitution boasts a Bill of Rights that enshrines various freedoms and rights. The ANC government works closely with social partners such as business, religious leaders, labor, and the community sector. These networks consolidate our participatory democracy. At the level of the delivery of basic services, water, electricity, roads, houses, clinics, and other basic services have been extended to millions of people since 1994. We have made progress in various other areas on health care, we have turned around one of our weakest points previously, the fight against HIV and AIDS. We have put more people on treatment than ever before, thus improving life expectancy. One of our greatest success stories is the remarkable 50% reduction in mother-to-child transmission of HIV. However, more people are still waiting. And our task is to extend these services to more people each year. The ANC has good plans and policies to enable us to move forward both in the short and long term. 
we have through the ANC government produced an overarching national development plan which outlines our vision of dealing with inequalities, social injustice, and the developmental challenges of our society. But work continues to transform our country and to achieve the national democratic society that is the vision of the ANC, a united, democratic, non-racial, non-sexist, and prosperous society. To achieve this society, we need a strong ANC. President OR would call for unity in the ANC so that it can be equal to the challenges of our time. He would urge all of us to, to pursue the unity of the Revolutionary Alliance. It is President Tambo who reminded us eloquently of the need for the unity of the Alliance. He said at the celebrations of the 60th anniversary of the South African Communist Party more than 30 years ago, and I quote, ours is not merely a paper alliance created at conferences, at conference, at conference tables, and formalized through the signing of documents and representing only an agreement of leaders. Our alliance is a living organism that has grown out of struggle, unquote. He would require of us to be steadfast on principle and to display revolutionary discipline. He would remind us that our responsibility is to give our people hope and direction during the most difficult periods. Most importantly, he would urge us to continue with the fundamental transformation of our country and to work for economic freedom more vigorously now, now that political, political freedom has been achieved. Therefore, in his memory, we should remain true to our resolutions and policies and prioritize those that will further improve the quality of life of our people. This includes our five priorities, education, health, the fight against crime and corruption, rural development and land reform, and creating decent work. At the 2007 52nd National Conference of the ANC in Bulugwam, the movement resolved that education and health must be prioritized as the core elements of social transformation. The Bologna ANC resolution on education also states categorically that the movement should progressively introduce free education for the poor until undergraduate level. The message from the students that were marching in the past week is therefore in line with ANC policy. That is why the ANC came out in full support of the student protests.
the Progressive Youth Alliance provided sound and in impressive leadership to the campaign. I met with presidents of students, representative councils, as well as vice chancellors and chairpersons of university councils to discuss the issues raised during the anti-free increments campaign. As announced, the work of the presidential task team on higher education will be expanded so that it looks at more than just high fees, but also broader transformation issues. As we seek solutions, we will also look at student studies that have been done on the question of free education, such as that of Professor Derek Swartz, the Vice Chancellor of the Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University. Some of the issues raised include the need to review the autonomy of the universities. The view is that there must be a difference between the autonomy of universities and academic freedom. Among other issues, the student leaders also asked for an end to financial and academic exclusion, for an end to racism, and for the needs of students such as accommodation to be attended to. We thank all the students who adhered to the Constitution of the Republic by marching and gathering peacefully. The right to assemble, protest, and express ourselves is guaranteed in the Constitution of the Republic. There is no need to resort to violence including the destruction of property when, ex when exercising this right. Violence of the, na of the nature seen outside the Union buildings and as well as in the parliamentary precinct is unacceptable and undermines the campaign which, as we said, seeks action that is in line with ANC policy. We look forward to working with the universities, including especially student leadership, <clears throat> as we address the transformation issues and build universities that would reflect the needs of a non-racial, non-sexist developmental state. Comrades, the ANC remains unwavering in its commitment to build a society free of the triple challenges of poverty, inequality, and unemployment. We will continue to invest in our youth and to support them in their development and growth as they are the future of our country. We will continue the quest for economic freedom so that all the developmental goals of our country are achieved. For as long as there are people who still live in shacks children who are being taught in mad schools, families with no access to quality health care, and children 
who go to bed hungry, youth with no money to start beyond metric, the African National Congress will never rest. <clears throat> Comrades and friends, President Tambo lived under cons constant pressure and stress, which at times affected his health. Given the demands of his position, he had little time to recuperate from illness. He suffered the first stroke in 1989, in April. In April 1993, he passed on, so close to seeing the achievement of his dream of a free, non-racial, and democratic South Africa. At his funeral in 1993, a <clears throat> distraught President Nelson Mandela stated, and I quote, Oliver Tambo has not died because the ideals of freedom, human dignity, and a colorblind respect for every individual cannot perish, unquote. We have one of our most important gateways, the OR Tambo International Airport, named after him, as do other host of institutions and localities. But President Tambo's legacy lives beyond that it is in the blood and in the blood, the heart and soul of the ANC. It, is, it manifests in our daily endeavors to create a non-racial, non-sexist, democratic and prosperous South Africa. And for that legacy, we shall be eternally grateful to President Oliver Tam, <clears throat> the man, the leader, a comrade. Towards his end of his life, O.R. left something remarkable. As the struggle intensified in South Africa, it was clear that we are faced with a challenge. How do we define our main thrust? Many people were beginning to say perhaps negotiations are necessary. This worried the leadership, worried OR in particular, because that could have tended to weaken the support. I think it is important to mention just a few of what O.R. did towards the end of his life. As we were worried that <clears throat> the world was beginning to lobby very heavily for negotiations, it was clear that we needed to say why should we continue with the struggle? That lobbying was beginning to shift some of our very strong supporters. Was big countries were lobbying a great deal. As you know, there was a structure <coughs> called the Frontline States. Even the regime here was trying to go to neighboring countries to influence them in a particular direction. Big Porter visited President Samora Machel in Mozambique <clears throat> to raise the issues that, in fact, they are not so difficult. They can have 
a, 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 a change and negotiated and discussions, etc. They've been negotiating with Mandela that he should agree to be released to his home called Transkai. He's refusing. And he says he actually comes from the royal house there. He would be wonderful there. But he's refusing. It's him who's refusing to leave prison. At that time, <clears throat> Samara Machel was about to visit the United States. He had made a mistake to sign a Gomati Accord without consulting. He wanted to consult. So he said, he asked the frontline state to come to Mozambique and meet. And President Tambo used to attend as an observer. So Samora Machel gave a report, detailed report of what Borda had said, etc., and said, I'm going to meet Bush. What should I say to Bush? And he gave a report, and at the end of the report, President Dos Santos raised his hand and said, well, it is clear that we are about to discuss South Africa. And I want to say that uh, if we are to discuss South Africa, we have South Africans here, let us allow President Tambo to lead the discussion. And he was given a floor by President Nyerere, who was chairing the meeting. And OR said, well, we are deepening our struggle. And <clears throat> the problem that we have is that the Western countries don't want to support the sanctions. So there are two things I'm going to say. When MK caters go home to fight, they have to go through your countries. So I'm asking only one thing. Don't see them when they pass through. That will be enough. He said, I can't ask you to support us militarily because this monster in South Africa will come and bomb everyone. Just don't see us when we pass with our things. Where I'll ask you for your support is to pressurize the Western countries to support sanctions. That one is not a risk to you. And the discussion focused on that. And therefore, <clears throat> Samara Machel was told to pressurize the United States through Bush to support sanctions. And those that were members of the Commonwealth they were going to meet in Bahamas, and they took a vow that all members of the Commonwealth who were members of the frontline states must pressurize Margaret Thatcher to accept the position. So that direction was given by OR as to what needed to be done. Indeed, the Bahamas conference pressurized Margaret Thatcher that she had very little to argue. And the end result was a compromise decision taken when she said, give me a chance, let us check once more. Let us have a group of eminent persons who must go to South Africa and test in reality, because when we talk to apartheid regime, they say, no, they're ready to talk, etc. That's what led to the establishment of the eminent persons group. And indeed, that, when that happened, as you know, they came here. They talked to everybody. They went to Lusaka. We said, no, they don't want to talk, these guys. They said to them, those guys in Lusaka don't want to talk. They want to come to the table with AK smoking and don't accept that. That led to a very serious debate. And fortunately, 
they came back to South Africa to meet the security cluster. When they were in Cape Town, the EPG, South Africa attacked Botswana, Zambia, uh, Zimbabwe. They bombed. That ended the negotiations or the consultations by eminent group. It was clear that South Africa did not want anything. And therefore, the pressure mounted that no, something must be done. That's when the pressure and everything was too harsh to both us and the regime. And that's when OR said, let us find a way to convince, firstly, the frontline states, the OAU, the non-aligned movement. And if we did that, we'll then convince the United Nations. So the AU ad hoc committee met in Harare to discuss what is it that we need to present that will unite our support. And after a long discussion, Babangida, who was the president of Nigeria, who used to attend, even if he was not a member of the OAU <clears throat> ad hoc committee, after a long discussion, it was all agreed, we need to produce a position that must begin to strengthen the unity of the anti-apartheid forces. Then Babangita proposed that if we are to have a document, let us give it to President Tambo to draft. And he was given that responsibility. And he was given a small aircraft to consult with all frontline state leaders, which he did. And that is what finally <coughs> caused him to get a stroke at the end of his work. That was his last work. But what did he leave behind? In consultation with Julius Nyerere, which was, I think, the last head of state to consult about the position paper, which gave birth to the Harari Declaration. It is in that meeting where they discussed the negotiations to say, if we are to negotiate, negotiations talking about the Constitution, you can't talk about everything. Establish the constitutional principles which will then become the pillars and the foundation of the Constitution. That's where the constitutional principles came from. Unfortunately, he could not even give the report. On the eve of giving the report, he was attacked by a stroke. But that was his last work, the Harari Declaration. We honor and remember this leader who was an extraordinary human being, a leader with every quality you need, a leader that on the day when the stroke attacked him, many of us thought that maybe the ANC will never be the same again without OR. a meticulous planner with clarity that was beyond any imagination. Comrade Oliver Tambo, our hero, our leader. The leader among leaders, respected by all leaders in the world. When he took the podium, they will stop bilateral meeting to come and listen to OR because they knew lessons will come out of his address. Unfortunately, the stroke deprived us of this <clears throat> great man, the giant of the African National Congress. As we remember him, let us look at ourselves today and think of him, the man who lived for the ANC, nothing else.
totally nothing else. I think we can do it. It is only when we try to be all that that the ANC can be what it is to deliver a prosperous country at the end. We must all be conscious of the fact that in the in the Thank you very much. In the internet. Thank you very much. Sibone, uh, Kufiga, Samkele, Ustal, Umama, Umahadeb, Mamubeti, young girl, and a pinchin, Samamgel, Kugaguake, Puchars, Puchars is a no sis, no few, and I want Gana. Is that Charles? Is that Charles? One girl and I am a good school. Single top. Comrades, what a what a moving story of our leader, eloquently given by the leader who knows O Artambo. Saza Safa Nekama, Babem Bizangal, watching Matambo. Hey, Gag, in Sigi. Nationalago, no Kaba Baba. What about my sister? Was it eight? I was six one. So, where's she? No more trousers, the music and a camera full of leave. As I walk, who put charges as a Smulella? Bulele and getting Kalamana. Mongameli Abandu gave a lapper by and as ten in our fund detaches in case. But I would maintain his toes and as Genova cling by his toes and his sars. Can be gave a funun trap of a kangel and their sars now. God again, I ask most who get in doing and as Tedang as toss. A funeral was chung a slug. Sia Vumelan as I went and Jalons October. The first thing I want to do is to record our appreciation from this region for what the ANC has been doing. Comrade Steve Twitter used to say, You can't praise a fish for swimming. But at least there are certain things you can praise a fish for. Its ability, among other things, to avoid being caught by humans or predators in the sea. And there are other things that fish can do. I do want to commend the ANC for having designed this program of memorial lectures. You see, comrades, in order for us to fully understand what we need to do is to understand those who consolidated the program for our people's liberation. In other words, we have to go back in history and have an understanding of how these icons, among them Oliver Tambo, who the president was talking about tonight, in order for us to be able to design our own program going forward. Namshanje Umongameli Ebesekawin Yase United Ethiopia. Saamba Singena Pagati Wemizi Apo. U president Wabona in Lela. Abandu be to Abapilangai. Now there are two things he picked up from that experience. But it was certainly not the first time that he has come across some of what is happening within the communities where our people live. 
the president saw that despite our 21 years in power, there are still so many of our people who have yet to taste what freedom is. The people we came across today have not as yet tasted freedom. But the second thing that he picked up, and I'm certainly, I certainly know that this is not the first time he has come across this, was how our very own are unable to assist our people to access freedom. See, Tibana no councillor up. In fact, Comrade President, I must say that at one stage, I was worried because I thought that you were going to clap this chap. Now, <clears throat> this fellow to start with was not only disrespectful to the people he's supposed to service, he was disrespectful to the president himself. Now, President, we will tell you about that person. That person, Comrade President, is someone that we had to actually surround and ensure on the day we were in this very hall to vote into position our new mayor. We had to do that to ensure that he came to vote for the ANC. Otherwise, he would not have come. Now, if in a situation like that, we have someone who behaves in that manner, why are we putting people into positions who are not following the characterization of an Oliver Tambo? <laughs> Comrade President and the ANC leadership sitting here and down there, the reason I am so grateful we started this program of memorial lectures is because there are so many things that many of you comrades sitting here tonight know. But in the main, these are things you read from our history books. But the fact that we put on a stage like this someone like our president, who has walked with these giants of our revolution is an added advantage to us. It means, Comrade President, and thank you very much for your lecture, we are enriched tonight. There are things we know from what you said tonight that other people outside of this hall don't know. Tina Sifundile. We are Funega Gesifunde because the repository of the annals of our history are people like Comrade Jacob Zuma, who has worked with the Tambos, with the Mandelas. Bonge Avabat, Uhambi Lena. Londo Yenza Uguti, Ubenezindo Ozaku Zazi, other people won't know about. But the ANC Imbege up so that we also could share in that experience. Siabulela, Comrade President. Siabulela, the ANC, for having done this. Siabulela, the ANC, Ngagumbi, the Office of Secretary General, Esseben Zisana, Nava Party Bepondole, to Ugwenza, the program. Siabulela, the Tundes, when the man in Caesar. Gwenzelindo ba sizo iboni lela epega pambi. Kasi siwa ni kwazu uspaga mis. Gwenzelindo ba sizo kwazu sevens. I tell our comrades in this region all the time I speak, Comrade President, that we cannot afford to allow those people who are betraying the cause of our people here to continue to lead from leadership positions. Yeah. 
if you betray the memory of Vuisile Mini, Wilson Kayingo, Znagilem Kaba, if you betray their memory, oh please, you are not an ANC member. You are not an ANC member. Comrade SG, you see, the African National Congress, as the president has said, under Comrade O.R. Tam, started very small. But because of the contribution that was made during those times, the ANC in 1994 was able to garner most votes here to be the ruling party, supported by our people. Because our people could trust the ANC with their lives, that with the ANC in power, our lives are going to change for the better. This must continue to be the case. Let us not at any level of our movement put into positions of leadership. People who have the possibility to betray the ANC. Let's, let's not do that. We can't betray, therefore, our people here, Om Shaba, Obani, we can't. But in advance, I would like to thank you as members of the ANC in this metro. Because you are changing the perception of the ANC and you are changing people to continue to support the ANC. Nkosi Diabule and WC and the other structures. At nine tomorrow morning, a wool board in the ayahs and a wool board will be called. In course. What's that called? So, Margaret, comrades, comrades. 
Tolong jangan mengingat sila ni le. Singapura tak misal nak puma aku ke Mongamed.